are talking valve guides. More specifically, valve guides and a set of old iron Pontiac 455 cylinder heads that uh, we're doing for a huge project uh, for our buddy Austin over at Lucor Automotive. In 1970, popular size valves, and when I say size, I don't mean the size down here of, of the, the actual tulip. I'm talking about the stem. Stem diameter that was commonly used back then was 3 eighths of an inch. Nobody uses 3 eighths valves anymore. Everyone uses 11 30 seconds, which is a little bit smaller. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you go into a catalog to order valves, it's actually pretty hard to find uh, 3 eighths valves. So what we did here is we knew we had to get new valves for him anyway. The valves were trashed, and since it's going to be a little bit more high-performance motor, we want a, a, a higher quality valve uh, made out of better material. And what we did is we switched to an 11 30 seconds valve stem. The valve's a little bit lighter because of that, and there's less material. But obviously, if you have a valve guide that is supposed to be guiding a 3 8 valve, and you try to put an 11 30 seconds valve in the hole, obviously that's not going to work. It's just going to slap around. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to replace the guides. Um, now, the guides needed replaced anyway, so we just kind of took advantage of the situation. Uh, but in an aluminum head, uh, the guide is actually is, is, a, is a separate piece that is uh, pressed in to a bore in the aluminum. Um, back in these days, the guide is just as cast with the head. There is no actual guide that is removable out of them. What we do is we actually go through and we cut out a large majority of material here with a tool. It does three different things um, in terms of, of, of cutting and then the last thing that it does which is the most important part is is it reams. And you remove this material this pretty much all becomes, this is all missing, okay? So this is all now missing. So now all this material is, is all now gone, okay? So what we do here is then we do put in an actual hardened guide like how we would in an aluminum head. And that's kind of what this picture is here. I hope this makes sense. I, I drew this in like maybe 10, 15 seconds. Unfortunately, I, I had video of, of this process of machining out all this material um, and we tried to um, upload it. It just didn't look right. I had it on my cell phone and I had it in, in portrait mode and it just, we didn't include it. So unfortunately the video skips this operation. Um, but in another video, I'll, I'll go over that because it's important and I think it's something that you need to see if this is something that you're interested in. Uh, but anyways, we have our guide, which is just this. That we now drive into the head. And through all this material we just removed, we now drive that in. Now that that guide is in place, we need to machine the OD, meaning this dimension here, down to accept a seal that slides over top of it. If you noticed in this picture, there naturally from the factory is a lot more material here. The width here and our width here is a lot larger there. That's just how they were from the factory. The way they did the valve seals back then was completely different. They didn't actually press the seal onto the, onto the guide like we're going to do. Uh, so this all needs to be machined out too. So you'll see in the video where I'm using a tool that's doing three different cuts at once. And what it's doing is it's cutting down the ID of all this extra iron here that we don't need anymore. It's trimming the top of the guide because when we put the guide in, it sticks up too far. And that's intentional because we're going to trim it down anyway. So this tool comes down, it trims down the top of the guide, and it, it trims down this and then it also trims down what's left of what the cast iron that would have still been there, which would be that. It removes all that. So what you end up with is something that looks like this. Now this step here is what we use to locate the spring locator 
or the cup, whatever it is that we're going to use. So at the end of all this, we end up with our guide that is, in this case, we machined it to 500 thousandths. That's 500 thousandths OD, outside diameter, with our chamfer on the top. And then our seal goes over top of that. And then our, and then here's our valve. We'll bring our valve back into the, into the picture. And uh, gosh, this probably looks awful, but I hope you get the idea. Maybe this will make a little bit more sense when we get into the video and you actually see what's going on. But uh, I wanted to, most importantly, explain this uh, operation of, of mo removing all of this material first, because that's the first thing that we have to do, and it's not in the video. Uh, it, the video goes from um, showing how the guides are loose to us immediately putting in the, the new guide. We skipped a lot of steps there that are important. The other thing I want to mention real quick is uh, valve guide clearance. It's very, I mean, it's really important. And uh, with higher mileage engines, they wear. I mean, the valve's going up and down, and um, <laughs> it can only go up and down so many times before things start to wear out. And uh, they get loose, and, and you can tell just by wiggling the valve that they're loose. But the problem there is that you want clearance there. You want enough clearance to where oil film can, can ride in there so the valve's lubricated, but you don't one, it's so tight that oil can't get there and it's dry or else the valve will literally seize up in the head and that's a terrible thing to have happen. But you don't want it too loose or else the, the oil will come past the guide and, it, and you know, it'll literally come down the valve stem and into the combustion chamber and you're burning oil and the motor's smoking. Um, the other thing is that it needs to be within a certain spec uh, because there is a level of heat dissipation that goes on between the valve stem and the guide. And if there's too much play there, uh, that's not allowing the valve to cool down. Most of the heat, and, the, and this is more <coughs> relevant with the exhaust valve, uh, but most of the heat is dissipated when the valve closes against the seat on the head. The, the heat from, you know, the valve dissipates into the head, but there it, it does travel up the stem and, uh, and it does, dissipate into the into the guide as well. I hope that clears things up a little bit. Uh, next thing you're going to see is us going over um, the current state of, well not the current, at the time the current state of the, the heads before we started machining on them at all and but you can tell with um, the factory 3 8 valve that the guide was already worn out. Uh, so anyway I hope you enjoy this video. Um, this is going to be a multi-part series um, but, uh, you know, when you, when you do a set of heads, the first thing you do is the guide uh, replacement. Uh, and then that allows you to move on to replacing seats, um, and then the valve job, and, you know, it just goes on and on. There's a certain amount of clearance you want between the valve stem and the guide, and usually you get a little bit of play out of that. So you need a little bit of room for oil. Um, what happens when they wear out, you end up with a lot more play than necessary and a lot of times that can be caused by poor rock room geometry when this happens is one oil gets past them causing the motor to burn oil and smoke um, the other issue is that the valve can't dissipate heat as well and the valve will actually get much hotter than it should eventually leading it to burn which uh, obviously is not good. We are installing uh, spiral ID guides and uh, these set of iron uh, Pontiac cylinder head. It went from uh, 3 8 to 11 30 seconds. Here we go. tops of the, uh, the guides, as well as the original uh, bosses where the guides were. And we're actually using a couple of spring shims as a stop so that we stop at the same height on all eight of them. The remaining 120 thousandths can be used to locate um, a spring locator or a cup, whatever it is we're going to use. 
um, and we're cutting the guide down to accept a, um, a Viton seal. This tool is making uh, two cuts simultaneously, one on the OD of the guide and then another one at the top of the guide. So we're actually trimming down the guide and cutting the OD of it to uh, 500 <coughs> thousandths uh, simultaneously. You can see as soon as the tool touches the, the spring shims, it rotates them. That's when you know when to stop. So like I was saying earlier, this tool makes two cuts simultaneously. We're cutting the OD of the guide, the OD of the iron lifter or guide boss, and the top of the new guide. And we're also chamfering the, the new guide as well. the guides that we just installed and trimmed, um, the Goodson Diamond Hone. They are tight. It's pretty typical. They shrink a little when you press them in. I've got one pilot that's exactly the, the diameter of the valve and one that's slightly larger that's going to give us the clearance we want, the oil clearance. Once our larger pilot goes through nice and smooth, then we're done. This is the one that's the size of our stem, of our valve. This one's just over a thou larger. It doesn't go yet, but the one on size does. We've got just a little bit more to go. A 341 and a half thousand pilot here. Goes in as expected. A one that's just over a thou larger. Nice and smooth. Our valve. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video, um, and I, I hope that was informational and, and that cleared things up a little bit. Uh, I know my drawing here is a little, a little sketchy, but uh, I hope actually seeing the, the machining uh, made things a little bit more understandable. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to explain this without actually showing it. Uh, but Our uh, next video is going to be seats. Now that we have the guides in, and they're sized appropriately to the to the valve. Uh, the same pilot that we used to measure for clearance is what we're going to use when we go in to cut the actual seats. This has to happen first because every process that we do to the to the seats and, and valve job um, beyond this, the the 30 machine 
relies on the guide, that's what it uses to center up on the seat. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike, I don't care. Uh, comment. Um, again, I'd like to read what you guys have to say, if there's something else you'd like to see, or if there's something you think I missed, or something that you would like me to explain more in detail. Uh, that those are all things that I would love to hear. Um, obviously subscribe, uh, there's going to be more videos coming. Next one's going to be doing uh, the seats. I think that one's a little bit more fun, more interesting. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that one.